Damn, what's up, fellas? Three and two in the house. Talk shit Tuesday. Give him that water. Did you clean up that shit? Did you check them chains and collars? Make sure they were nice and secure. Make sure them anchors was down nice and tight. And if you did, then today is a good day. No accidents. Everybody's still free. We still bulldogging it. What's up? What's up, fellas? What's up, man? What's up? Hawks in Tuesday in the house. What's up, fellas? Ladies, doggers. y'all doing today fellas hope everybody's doing good hope everybody had that good june 19th something new got my holiday though another day the father's day hope all you father dog men it's the dog man out your life for a minute to be a good father you know it's hard to do for our occupation hobby, whatever you want to label us. You know, that toss between family you got outside and the family you got inside. 
Sometimes we got to figure out which one is more important. To be honest, they both need it. So it's a struggle. So for all you fathers out there, let me be the first to tell you guys, heads up, I salute you. For being a father as a dog man. There's a different role in that game. I'm pretty sure it's like that in other things that people put their passion and their heart into. I know I sure did. Probably why I got so many damn kids. A different mama. <laughs> you know, I change dogs and women like you know what I'm saying. It's a struggle, but hey, dogs going to stay. I'm understanding that. I'm understanding that. I had to learn the hard way, but I understood that much about it. I love my dog. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. For those who are new, don't forget to hit the subscribe. For those who leave the room tonight before you leave, just hit that little like if you like. Okay? You might not understand it. If you're still green, just new to it. But just hit a like and come back. I guarantee you, I can see it. Again, happy Father's Day. Hey guys, today we're gonna be talking about some stuff. I know y'all y'all wanna know what the hell this dude gonna be talking about. Diabo. What the hell can he say about Diabo? You know, but y'all should already know. Most of you guys should already know. You know what I'm saying? So when we go play and do the Diabo thing today. I don't see a different thing approach on the way twin do this. Twin gonna come at this the going hard way, okay? See, my way of looking at it is we already know that a lot of the great bloodlines come through the way of Diablo. You know, for a lot of you guys, I mean you newer guys who are so far up is your pedigree gonna go probably don't even go back to Diablo. But a lot of my I, I, my stuff went back to Diabo, Kobe. I mean, I I figured out a whole lot once I got that big old 16 thing pedigree from uh, ABA where I had a big old pedigree to read and learn from. And based on a lot of the dogs I had, guys, for those who haven't seen a going hard dog, just go back to some of the videos. I, I got them all pulled up. You'll see what I'm talking about. You guys who understand reading pedigrees, you'll see the formula that I always talk about. Okay, back then they didn't have a page online. Back then they didn't have, they had journals. They did have journals, not like Sporting Dog Journal or anything like that, but they, they had a network. They had a network of guys. And to be honest, though, if you go back, well, I said we're going to, Dive Boy is the best place for me to start. I look at it the going hard way. Why networking amongst the fraternity is so important. Again, I said the network of the dog men back then, without the network that they had and the activity and what they were doing, you know what I'm saying? Without the internet, okay? Without a sporting dog journal of any sort to write up matches, without any of that. They have something that we lack even when we hit the biggest peak in the dog game in the 80s and it peaked even higher in the 90s. It peaked and plateaued in the 90s and it plateaued going into the 2000s. By 2010, it has diminished the network. The network was such an important thing back then without all the things that we have at our, our hands that they were able to produce and match and breed certain lines within this little spot of fraternity guy. But that little spot of fraternity guy spread all the way back over there to Ireland in England. That's where all those dogs came from. And the funny thing about it, these guys getting off the boat with these dogs is already in contact with guys over here. They was already in contact. 
So how in the hell they know what's going on way over there? Back in the 1950s. You understand what I'm saying? Floyd Boudreaux was in, in that little pack of guys. From Floyd, Mr. Baker, to Cavino, Hubbard, all of them. All of them. That was, it was a network. And within that network, they were connected. There wasn't no Kobe yet. They didn't add the Kobe. They was over there doing their own thing. These dogs came together and made better dogs down in the end. But prior to this, in the network that we're working from, when we start talking about Maurice Carver, Floyd Boudreaux, and Dybo, and all these other dogs, and how even Dybo was produced, and where did the Dybo line even begin? We're dealing with guys who were dealing with their own type of formula within their own network that created a fraternity because these guys were still matching dogs. These were active, not just throwing puppies together, seeing who had the prettiest breed. The half of the breeding wasn't even right. Half of them wasn't even right. And everybody be under, trying to figure out well, why was they so crooked about giving up the right papers. You know what I mean? Why Bully Sanders off an of iron head. Snooty off an of iron head. You go take a look for yourself back then. Based on, hey, it was like a normal thing, guys. Let me explain it. I'm going to explain it to you. I just threw those two names out there. They're Clearly, they saying Honey Bunch was off of Iron Head, and they're trying to say that Snooty was off of Iron Head. Now, who's Snake? And that bully son, Honey Bunch. Both dogs, they're trying to say it was clearly off of a great dog, Carver's Iron Head. Now, Maurice Carver did a lot of shit like that. He did a lot of shit like that. He was against his damn self, so he, he, he was on his own thing, but his, he had an explanation. He had an explanation and they all kind of picked up on it. And to this day, you know, the question gonna come back to you guys. It's in the survey. But listen to what I'm gonna tell you. Reach Carver had a reason. His reasoning was they all was trying to sell dogs. But they was all matching dogs. And for that dog to be able to be sold, they had to win. It was, it was like a business to these guys. Jesus, Jesus, deep dog man in the beginning, straight up the rear, coming off the boat, knowing how these dogs is bred, moving these dogs from hand to hand to hand to hand, all in connection. These shows going on, all these dogs picking up all these wins. There was a network. Shit even got busted. Misdemeanors. Back then. And this is in the 50s. 30s, it was all at the Madison Square Garden. Go see a big convention. But by the 50s, late 50s, it was, you know, they started, hey, you can't be out here fighting dogs. Not like you used to. That's when it started going underground. But it was during these times when they got underground, the, the, the network even got even tighter and better. The matches even became bigger. Got stories about cotton bullets, all these great dogs back in the day, and all those dogs, Diabo. You know, in his day, three time winner, actually, they were actually recording, they'd be calling the champion Diabo. There's a lot of these dogs. Grand champion Rasco, six time winner, but you don't see grand champion on your shit. You're not going to see it on Pairs of Land because back then, there wasn't. Listen to this clearly. There was not a sanctioned body to certify any champions or grand champions. If you're going to call your dog a grand champion and champion, you're the only one that's sitting there calling that. Maybe those guys who've seen him, but it's not a sanctioned, certified champion to nothing. To nothing. When you call your dogs a champion, champion certified and sanctioned by who? 
you know, at least go with the courtesy and don't put the champion on there and do it like the old days did it and just call them what they were. Three time winner, four time winner, six time winner, 14 time winner without a title because there's no sanctioned body to give you one. You can't even call your dog a champion if you're going to go based on whose rules and whose regulations was certified as one. That doesn't mean nothing. Because that sanctioned body is gone no more, than, so it's irrelevant what they went by. But at least when they were active or on, there was a sanction who recognized those type of titles. The guys are out here tiling these dogs with what? So I relate this again. I'm going back to Daibo and before the network of guys that was able to do far more with less than we have at our, our hands right now. They were still able to network. They were able to network and pay attention and see these shows and know what dogs they acquired and know what to do with the dogs when they was getting them. Certain guys was playing with this stuff. Dabo went around the bush a couple of times. Rasko went around the bush a couple of times. We can say that about Zebo. We can say that about, hey, a whole lot of them dogs coming through their lines. This is where so many of them dogs and lines was created right off of this movement of a network. You think they was out here? Look, Dabo was four years old before he started even smacking anybody in the mouth. Four years old. He didn't ever sit on Earl to the yard. The grown dog he already won one by the time Earl got him back, if I'm correct. Been stolen. Old brother had him over there, had him over there for years. Before Earl finally went and got him back, he still didn't slap nothing in the mouth and tears after four, he turned four. And then one on the win three. Okay, he was a three-time winner though. He said he won one and then Earl got him and won two more. It never did say if the brother ever had done him. It just say by the time Earl got him, Earl had won one two more with him to win, make him a three-time winner. So Dabo, Tudor Dabo was a three-time winner. You know, but again, we're still talking about a dog that had been moved around. Now, what made him so prominent that all of a sudden, Compared to his late starts and his coming on at a late age, that means he wasn't even bred to nothing prior to all this, y'all. There's no puppies. Nobody ever said anything about when they had him and he was moving around as a cold dog to anybody that bred to him. Through my years, I haven't felt or heard anything of that sort until after. He proved that he was a vulnerable, a, a good a dog to even think about breeding to. Then he was like a 40, 40 pound something dog. He's like a 46, 47 at the most. He was even smaller than that, but he wasn't no big dog. Like all these, you know, them bully sun dogs that start coming out, big, big black motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Big mouths and biting like they biting, okay? These dogs, had only started being bred after the people had seen what they saw and started inquiring on themselves. Now, you have to understand, Maurice Carver and his attitude about things was he had something going on, and a lot of dog men, Floyd, all them boys ain't know, them boys was dog men. I don't even know if they was really <clears throat> running the ADB as strong as they was running it now as like they was then, but it, they, somebody was doing something right because they was able to record a lot of these dogs in the breeding when they did start recording them. And some of the moves that they were making is clear to see not only was there a formula to the breeding, there was had to be some type of a network where these guys, active dog men who actually bred dogs, was a part of what made these dogs the dogs that we still talking about today. 
They were still the same dogs that made the Common Kinskis famous. Common Kinskis came in and bit a lot of dog men with their line. The line is not as strong as none of these lines that we're speaking of today. But they were strong enough to put a knot in the game. And it was probably because it was such a private line that he didn't ever get to spread his wings. The Norride stuff never really got a chance to spread their wings as strong as the, the dogs like the yellow, the maydays, and the, you know, that line of run dogs. I'm not talking, I'm talking about them Eli dogs and Pulley Sun dogs. They still run them to this day. We might have a hand few of them Norride stuff, that Tonka stuff, that cremate, crem, uh, Cremator stuff. You know, but this was a network, and in that network, they were able to still maintain the active checking of these dogs. Competition and competitive that they was running into, checking these dogs, these new lines, the Kobe's over there coming in with they they line, Alonzo. Then you look over there, you see the Norite. Can't even start talking about the old family red noses yet. But these are those dogs. And these dogs was being in a network that these were great dogs. How do we know they were great dogs? Because we ain't talking about nothing else but dogs that win. A dog that produced winners, a dog that has something to talk about. Somewhere in this conversation, where do we even, can, can we pull a piece of shit out of here anywhere that is worth the breath that I'm talking? This is why we can say these dogs' names and y'all know who I'm talking about. Got what I'm saying, fellas. Yes, this is definitely not particularly about Dibo. But the things that can be undiable before diable was already being handled in such a formula that it was such a formula that was done through a network that was so well oiled and put together by a bunch of guys who was one thing for damn sure. Putting that shit down. The only way they wanted it. The only way they'd be standing on your yard. Wanting something. They were serious about that shit. Nobody gonna want nothing that ain't winning. They talk about a whole lot of bad dogs back then because there was so many of them out there and it was such a network and it was such a formula that everybody was paying attention to what everybody was doing and got involved in what they thought would help them become better than what they were, which everybody benefited. We're still talking about in the 1950s where they didn't even want to deal with Peace Parks and his shit. Remember his little book that he was trying to continue this, but there was nobody re reporting. They was all talking about breeding. Got to the point, that's probably what started killing the book because now they don't want everybody to know what they, what they recipe was, so they start lying about it. So you don't go home and make what they got. Unless you with them, or they know you, or they like you. So yeah, you go over there and get a dog from them, but I guarantee it ain't bred the way he says it's bred. Especially if you over there buying something because you know he got some badass shit over there. He's gonna probably get you some badass shit, but guess what? It ain't gonna be what you think it is because he's not gonna give you the recipe that created it because he did not want you to have it. Listen to what I'm saying, fellas. And he wasn't the only one with that fever. So it's not the fact. You know, everybody can say what everybody was doing. And he's, they're right. But he made a good point when he admitted, hey, I, when you win, everybody wants something. And when you got it to sell, you sell it. That is, everybody can't have what made you where you are today. As long as they winning, I'm going to still get the love. But they ain't going to never know how it's really bred because I made it at home and I ain't going to give it to them. 
We read all this other way, but guess what he did? He made damn sure that y'all didn't know how they was truly bred to go ahead and duplicate what he was doing. Y'all knew y'all had some badass dogs. But see, a lot of the older dog men got smart with old Maurice and then go on the fact that Maurice's papers meant shit. They start pointing on the dog. They start pointing on the dog and they started right there. Don't know how the dog is bred. Marie gave me some papers, but I don't know exactly how the dog is bred because it comes from Marie's yard. But I'm going to tell you what, this is a bad SOB right here. And however he bred, I'm going to start my bloodline starting with him. Based on what he has given me and done for me. He's a winner. Don't know you know how I bred. This is how Marie saved. But I can't go on that. I'm going to go on the fact that this is how he's bred. Based everything on him. How he saves bread, that's not why I'm breeding. I'm breeding for what his accolade was and the kind of dog he is on my yard. And guess what? You got people knocking on the door wanting to breed to him too. Understand what I'm saying? You best believe back then, Back then, there was a, a little network that only a few who was already tagged in with some of those dogs knew and knew each other, knew what they had. It was able to make these crucial breedings that was like line and inline breedings because they knew. They knew, yes, there was, they was all out there when they had a chance to advertise. They did advertise. But the truth about those breedings for those who was winning a lot with them, they weren't true because they was not willing to give up the recipe. They give you any other line, but they won't give you the recipe to really what kind of dog you got there that's kicking all that ass. As long as they can never produce it, they'll do that. They'll use the hell out of that line for their own pleasure. And still getting the props, regardless of what papers he gave you, he's still getting the props because you got a bad dog off his yard and you seeing what he's doing. Now, when you get the dog all up there and famous and he slipped that word on, you know, that dog ain't really bred like that. Then you wonder why. Then he's only telling you because he's going to explain to you why he kept it a secret and it was his own private registry, uh, recipe. No. Explaining them out. I'm explaining them out. That's what it's all about. They deal with the, okay, well you the one you know, something looking for something what you looking for. No, I didn't you do. Mm -mm. No, this is what was going on during that time. These group of guys. I think what Mike is trying to want me to do is, is go through these names of people. See, it's no use to me going through here ratting their names off ahead of the fact that let me explain what they were doing then let me put names to this you know so it'd be a whole lot clearer for me to instead of y'all getting bezazzled over the names that I'll be saying and forgetting the point that I'm trying to make it took all these guys to know what each other were doing you know they, somebody had Goldie Somebody had bounces, okay? They, they knew each other. It came as much as they had no problem doing, doing events. They always had events. You know, a lot of these dogs were, were known dogs. That's how we can talk about Searchy Jeff and all these old dogs of the past and Boomerang. And we can talk about dogs before Boomerang, do great shows, 16 time winners. It had to be a network. See, that's the point I and mean, I'm trying to get you guys to see why you getting stuck on the dog. Let's get staying on the dog men and the dog men during that time. Something that is still important that we lack today. This is why we don't. And there's no way it's possible to have such a future like the past because it has been diminished. 
we got to remember now if we was putting colors on Diabo and them, imagine what Diabo and, and, and Rasco and all those dogs' pedigrees would be looking like. If we could put their wins on their stuff on Pez Online. And why don't we? Bully Center all win, but very seldom people are even registering. Bully Center loser. It's very seldom you got any people putting that on the Pez Online. We all know. But we don't give him his loss, nor do we give his RM status. Or POR. Okay, so this is what we're talking, this is the thing I'm talking about. Without all that, you can still look at the dogs for what they were, because without all that, and there's nobody running around chasing CHs and GRs and CHs and ROMs back then, yet they were still able to produce these very lines by a network that kept them active and producing great dogs. And they made the level of dogs even better with what they were doing because of their competitiveness and their farmers producing great dogs. And the very same dogs, it's hard for us as of right now in 2022 to get past those dogs so long ago. We're so stuck still on those dogs long ago because we don't have the, 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 the network has diminished. I mean, if you go back, guys, and really want to get a real eye opening, stop paying attention to the dogs as much as what they were doing with those dogs. And stop talking about Diablo and let's start talking about the pathways and the pathways of Diablo, Zebo. I mean, the pathway to these dogs, these dogs was passed around. It's not like us when we get a good one, that mug ain't going nowhere. You know, you might let a good one off the yard, and by the time he gets to somebody that number in hand three, he's a grand champion. And you mean to tell me you knew that was going to be a grand champion? That's why you let him go? No. No. Double left his Earl's yard as a puppy and didn't return to his after fall. Rasco down to the same path. He got stolen. He was a cold dog, and they just, they just cut him loose. Just let him go. Told him he didn't need a little cold-ass dog, and they just cut him loose in the street. That's how they got him back. Slow starter. These are the kind of dogs that I'm talking about that has made the history of dogs, dogs that we don't have that kind of time to wait on. We won't wait. A lot of you won't wait. Okay, and, and let's talk about the network. The network of dogs. I'm talking about the actual network of how they was doing this. Right? Now, we already know the line itself, it, it started in England. This is, this is um, Davos now. This is his line. He came out of out of England, Birmingham, England, and he was imported by this dude named Charles Courtney and Charlie Lloyd of Manhattan, New York. Now let's let's talk about that piece right there. You got old Courtney coming out of um, England, and you got Lloyd in Manhattan. Stranded dogs with kind feeling. He was of Chicago which was selectively bred by Joe Covino, also of Chicago, which resulted in two key dogs, Covino's Jim, which was Dabo's great-grandsire, and his literary brother, Covino's Shorty. Now, you know, this was a long time ago, but listen to the name. And, and when we listen to the names, Look at the people in ball. These is dog mans making dog moves. The proof in the, uh, the fact that it was a network is clearly seen. Clearly, and knowing exactly what they were doing when they did it. Okay? 
Okay. Now, Tyrone's Rasco had the same father as Dabo. Hubbard's bounce. Which they also called him Cavino's bounce. Bouncer. Let me put that right. But the Venus called him Bouncer. The Harbors called him Bounce. Now, this is Davo's daddy, but we, they were, we're back on the Cabino. You see what I'm saying, guys? They already are working in a network. I mean, this network reached way over there in England and worked its way over here to produce. Dabo and Rasco. This, this, them guys there. We're not talking so much other dogs. I'm talking about the network and how these dogs came to pass. You know, y'all just sit back and just look at the breeding. Y'all don't look at the, the, the planning and the concept of the formula that we see in these dogs' pedigree back, not back then, now. Go back there and look. You don't see a formula. The same formula that I'm telling you guys every day when I go to point out these great dogs, there's a formula there. Imagine this was all created back then with these guys. Long before Dibo, Dibo is a result of a formula that was put together very well and used very well. We can't put colors on shit that's not sanctioned. So you don't see nobody running around there sanctioning themselves like we sanctioning ourselves now. Nor are we out here getting out here breeding great breedings and planning great things with the lack of reference and information that, you know, they reaching out to England, y'all reaching over here looking for y'all imports. A dog that's nowhere close to the dogs that we had in the 90s for them to even be sending any of that shit back over here. Not like it was back then when they were sitting over here calling the hell out of that shit coming back from over here. Because they had a formula of what they were doing to continue to be competitive. Remember, this ain't about who got the best pedigree. It's about who can come up with the best producing winner. They care less about a pedigree. They care so much about a pedigree, they give you a wrong one just so you can't copy what they do. They want to take it all themselves. But they can't stop you from coming over wanting to spend your money because you want some of that shit too. And when that some of that shit come out winning for you, it's still going to get the credit. But this is where the stories come by where he ain't bred like they say he was. I always wondered about Honey about your Bully, son. And wonder how Iron Head bred to Amber. If we would just say that she was bred to Iron Head, it would be more explainable where the snooty shit come from. You know what I mean? The little long, strong, powerful bodies that they had, the big fucking heads they had. You know, Jeep. You know, I'm looking for Jeep to have a black brother. Shit. Did one die in the litter? I mean, I've been around dogs a long time and I've never seen a black breeding with a black dog and not have black pups. Now, I'm sure that when they bred that Abernathy stuff, this is where Black Jack Jr. come from. I mean, you know, the actual Black Jack off Gator. He's a black dog coming off a red dog. Mama. But guess what? We expected to see that, right? Well, did anybody know a Jeep had a black brother? A sister? Coming straight off a of bully son? Did uh Eli Jr., you know, grand champion Art look damn little like honey bunch? Did Eli did, did Art have any litter mates that was black? I'm trying to remember. I remember Java and there was Java and them black. I think Java they did have he did have some black ones in his litter. You know what I'm saying? Because they're supposed to be in litter mates, right? But when we start talking about honey bunch, 
being bred to Ironhead compared to Honey Bunch being bred to Bully Son, you know, and then especially when they sit there and tell you, when they sit right there and tell you, right there and tell you, say, well, look, that Jeep dog ain't no Bully Son dog. You know what I mean? I didn't want y'all to know because it was such a good reason. I didn't want y'all to know my recipe. That's how they did it. I didn't want to tell you. You got a great dog, though. Let, you know, dog famous now, and they got all them papers out, bred off of Bully Son and all, but they're truly honestly, the man who actually did the damn breeding stuff said it, wasn't, it didn't go down like that. They don't, they don't want y'all to know. They want you to have good dogs. They want you to win with the dog, and they want you to keep coming back. But they're not going to give you the recipe that they use to create that shit because they don't want you to have it, even though you got the damn dog. See, they're able to know it and go to the right dogs to keep it going. You got to damn near sneak and watch they moves to really know what they really do. Because that's exactly what Maurice Carver was doing. That's exactly what Floyd Boudreaux was doing. Exactly what Chico Lopez is doing. Exactly what Evolution Kennels has been doing. And a lot of other of these kennels has been doing. Because once they got you coming, they're really selling y'all papers. And if those papers work for the dog, more for them. Really more for them. Good for you, but more for them. Because guess what? You still got a good dog that you really don't know the truth on how this dog is really bred. So you have to start right there. That's why when I said, when I made my first champion off of my breeding, there was no more of this other shit. There ain't no mayday, nothing going hard because I'm taking the dogs right there. Don't care if May 2 was off of May Day or not because it all starts with him now. Him now. I bred it. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me because whatever he produced is the point. He might not be off of May Day. Possibilities may be true. Point is, it doesn't matter. There's a chance of fact that he's a producer. No. How's he a producer? Does he produce winners? Does it make him a great one? I didn't call him a great one. I didn't even call him a good one. I call him a producer. Haven't you produce a champion? A registered man? You produce a song. So me, I have to produce a whole bunch of shit. But you're on a path, especially if you're dealing with a path of dogs that come from a line that they was producing. We don't even know how you bred. But we're just going to go on the fact that this is what they said you was bred like. So we're going to take these accolades based on what they're telling us, and we're going to rock with them. But to be the bottom line, and the point to me was the fact that once he done that, it was all about him now. I don't even care about how you was, who you off of, bro. It's all about you now. And that's how you have to look at the Carver dog. That's how you have to look at the Gardner dog. The Edwards dog, Jan Edwards, he did it. He did it too. Pat Patrick, he did it. David Tant, he did it. He did it a lot. Carl Cools was quiet about it. Probably all the mother kennels out there, they have to have one time at some point that they don't want the public to know what they're doing. And don't mind giving you a great one, but won't tell you how you mix it to get it. Not until they have used it up to the point that they can make pretty good living. They're taking their shit, this, this chemistry that you're making, that they're making, and they're winning with it, they damn self. That's why you're knocking on the door. They got enough of it. They ain't going to tell you exactly what it is, but they're going to sell it to you, and that's what you guys are getting out of the deal. And there have been some great dogs out of the deal. There's a whole lot of controversy in a lot of these dogs in the way they were bred for that very reason. It's not like they were being skying, you know, slimers or rip-off artists. You know, they just had a certain thing about being active and trying to produce dogs that's going to work for them and at the same time collect that money from the public. So they were able to win 
breed, sell, and produce. And then many times, kept their recipe to themselves and continue using that recipe and then mind selling y'all stuff off of it. As long as I didn't know how to breed it, to copy it, to make it work, only thing you had at that time was the perfect dogs, like art. Prime example. They go art. You, hey, you see what came off the yard? Is art really off in this shit? We don't know. Is y'all be like Junior? We don't know. A lot of people say it. Yeah, a lot of people say it ain't. Angus. Fred and Miss Woolly. Seeing dumb dark brown dogs, brindle dogs, and then, you know, and then coming off a of red and white Charlie. Deal coming off a of honey bunch is supposed to have a half black in her, and that's still not having a black dog. Even after being bred to Miss Woolly. Okay, points to be made. The controversy is only a controversy if the dog is worth being a part of a controversy, and that would mean the dog would have to be a part of some type of greatness. Some type of beyond honorable mention. And this is why we're talking about Dibo and Rascal. Not the dog. It's the owners, the breeders. You know what I mean? I want to give y'all some inserts on some of the stuff, y'all. So I can give you guys some little intake. I'm going to read this part. I stopped off at, at Jip being the shorty, okay? Now, let me continue this. It says, Dabo also had an influence from the powerful strain of Frank Henry of Marietta, Ohio whose blood centered around his Richmond dog, which was imported from uh, Woover Hamilton, England. The Richmond blood was blended with Lloyd's Plotted blood, a WT to hand, and great aces such as Swinford's champion King Patty, Henry's champion Black Brandy, Tudor's grand champion Black Jack, and his much-feared son Peterson's grand champion Black Jack Jr. These dogs all resorted from this line. Now, the person that's putting this story in, you'll never see this champion nothing. Them, truly. You know, the person who wrote this, they added it, added the six time winners, you know, and they put probably better for you guys to understand. Okay, because basically the pilot, the pilot dog, it was actually Dabo line that descendant that was the dog I was talking about that came from England right now if you notice again what do we notice again we're still talking about imported dogs making it to Ohio get me man what kind of network is going on here Anybody ever think about that? What was making? Why were these connections coming? What was their? What was their resources? What was the network that these guys was able to have these champions and grand champions and and and, and these aces and still had a network to make the connection to make some of the greatest breedings of all time that went down in history. Not talking about the dogs now, are we? No, we're not. Let me continue though. All right. Grand Champion Black Jr. was out of Cunningham's Nelly, a pure Henry bitch that descended from Richmond, another imported dog. The daughter of Grand Champion Black Jack was then bred to the imported Irish old family game dog, Billy Sharpie's Red Jerry, owned by Sharp, Ship, I mean Shipley of Texas, who maintained a breeding partnership with Irish man Jim McCorin. There's a network right there. In the, in the whole conversation, do you know these guys know each other? 
we we know these dogs is working because somewhere in there, Shipley, Henry came into contact. Imported dog down there in Texas now. All right? This breeding yield the bitch Tudor's Goldie. Hmm. The devastating pit dog with the Joe Cavino bought from Earl Tudor and incorporated into his breeding program, which ultimately resulted in Diabo. Okay? Remember I told you when we first started this, we was going to talk about Diabo, but not Diabo, actually this dog. We're going to go beyond Diabo, before Diabo. I mean, Diabo, the way he was bred, we can sit back and watch the way Diabo was bred, but guess what, fellas? There was a formula that created Diabo. And the only way that formula could have been working, there had to be a network. See, that's what I got caught up in. I went up there and did the going hard understanding of what was going on then and watch it come to a plateau in the 80s and 90s. We had 20 good years. We had 20 good years of some of the best competition, some of the greatest show, some of the greatest dogs came out of that. Some of the greatest stories came out of that. Some of the greatest breedings came out of that. All related to that beginning of that network and that formula that created Diablo. The network that had to be in this country for us to be still networking with overseas dogs and lines. And when you get here, still be competitive, still win, and yet still be able to produce great dogs and create even bigger and better lines. That's my point. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we got more. Dabo's Dam with Ed Richardson's Bambi. Bambi, also known as Hanzo's Bambi, who was sired by, Rich by Richardson Spike, and she was out of Richardson's body, a novice by the name of W.D. Smith acquired Bambi and made the breeding of Wiz, Wiz Hubbard's bounce. Smith eventually sold Dabo as a pup to a man named Jensen, who only wanted a pet for a son. The young boy named his pet Dumbo. We got tired of him, and he wished he had a collie. So he actually, what he did was, oh, Jensen contacted Mr. Hanzo in regards to trading Dumbo, which was Dabo, as a puppy was Dumbo, for a collie. Our Hansel knew Bounce and Bambi were good individuals, but still had his doubts as one of Bounce's sisters was questionable. You see what I'm saying? Even then, even then he knew the little. Listen to what he said. Our Hansel knew Bounce and Bambi were good individuals. I mean, there's a network and connection there because he knew. But he knew another bottom of there. I don't know. One of them little sisters is shaky. All right? But guess what? Let's move on. And Bambi was a cold dog. He had a problem with that. But he still, he made the trade. And then that means... Dumbo went home to Howard Hansel and he stayed where he would follow Mr. Hansel and stay out of the reach of the dogs on the yard for about two years. Imagine that. All oh, y'all talking all that shit about Dabo. And yet at two years old, he's still walking down the yard with old Mr. Hansel. Probably as he's feeding the dog, standing there looking at him. Ain't trying to get too close to him. At two years old, he's still hanging around, around Papa Leg. No one ain't ready yet. This is for you guys who really didn't know. Okay, Bambi a cold dog. 
right? Earl Tudor visited Hansel's yard and took a liking to Dumbo. Mr. Hansel offered Mr. Tudor any dog on his yard, trying to convince him to purchase a good dog. In spite of everything, Mr. Tudor took Dabo home, which he was still called Dumbo, and he changed his name to Dabo. Shortly after he got him, Dabo was stolen, and he was sold to a black restaurant owner. The car, his name was Runt. Frank Ferris later changed all the incorrect papers. You know what I'm saying? It said Mr. Frank Ferris later changed all the incorrect papers. The pup wouldn't hit a lick until it was two and a half years old. And when it did, it was an eighth from that day forward. Okay? It said Floyd Boudreaux and William Burley owned a good brindle dog named Buzz on half. They had to pull this pup off of Buzz in 18 minutes as he wrecked Buzz in short order. Floyd matched him at 39 pounds and into a 40 pound dog, and he won the contest in short style and order. He used his dog, he used dad, his, he used his main, his dog, dad's main dog. Six weeks later, and matched in the uh, Gavin's Toran and his highly regarded country boy dog, gave him a, a pound and beat him in 33 minutes. Tudor, Tudor got Dabo back from the gentleman, and by the age of four, Dabo had already turned on and eventually became a three time winner at 44 pounds. His performance record is in no comparison to his ability to produce dogs. For all those who didn't know that much about Dabo, you see what I mean? So when y'all be looking at that pedigree, and you be, you know you just picture yourself looking at Dabo. You know what I mean? That uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Dabo. Okay. Now remember what I told y'all about now. Look at all these great dogs that he put that, that little dog produced. It wasn't no big dog now. Right? Dog go a long way. Now let's talk about Rascal now. All right, did I go over his, that was, that's the Dabo's dog he created. Oh, let me go over some of Dabo's greatest, some of his better dogs, okay? Dabo created a White Rock, a four-time winner. Tudor Spike, a four-time winner. Tudor Jeff, a three-time winner. Tony Hans Black, a three-time winner. McCall Snowball, we all know, we know the story about Snowball. Harrell's Topper, a five-time winner. Heinzel's Polly. Ed Crenshaw's Buck, Edward Sam, Carver's Cracky, Cracker, Shorts or Hayes' Crybaby, a four-time winner, and Boudreaux's Blind Billy, and, and, and we still got more than we can keep going. But I mean, these dogs you know. I can look at a lot of these dogs, and these a lot of these dogs go back to a mini pedigree to these dogs in the day. Your pedigrees can go back that far if you ever seen them that far. But a lot of the very same dogs that we're talking about right now are in those pedigrees from a dog that had been passed around. Didn't even start to is later in his years. It says it does it really said two and a half. It said by four when Earl got him back. 
He was he already a, a three time winner? I'm not sure. That's not what I heard. I heard Earl won two wins. He was already a one time when he by the time he did get him back. All right, now let's talk about Rasco. And you know, and when we talk about Rasco, you can see, give me a picture of Rasco up here. Why you putting out that picture of Rasco for a footnote? Dabo had two litter mates also that had famous names themselves. Heinzo's Arizona Pete and Lagham's Leo. We all know about Arizona Pete more than we know about that Landhorns. But it would be something interesting to go back and Pull that up and see how far we can go back on the peasant line and see what that little, that, 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 that little, a little, what that is. But most of us is more familiar with Diabo and Arizona Pete, especially the way they bred those dogs, you know, in those pedigrees to produce the very dogs that we talk about today. So when we're going to start, I'm going to go into Rasco now. Put it back up here so I read this stuff and look at this dog here. The rascal was sent to Hanson by Cavino, and later Rascal went to Pete Lorman, then to Lavelle, and finally Rascal was traded to Foy Boudreau. How many hands did this dog pass through? Let's see. Rascal was sent to Hanson, that's one, by Mr. Cavino. Then he later he went to Pete, that's two. And then he went to Clavel, that's three. And then was finally traded to Floyd Boudreaux, that's four. Where he and Gabon Tryon collaborated on many of the breedings with Rasco. Boudreaux said Tyron, Tyron, never owned the dog, and it should appear as Boudreaux's rascal, like he is registered. Anyway, Floyd owned the dog and crossed him with Blind Belly. Like Diabo, Rascal wouldn't start as a young dog, and as a matter of fact, he was stolen, but because of the fact that he hadn't turned on, they turned him loose into the street. Boudreaux saw him in 1957, when he got out of the service and he fought against, let's see what it says. He said he saw him in 1957 when he got out of service. He fought against a big black dog that was out of Cannon's Black Shine. In those dogs. At that time, they were all arrested. But in those days, it was just a misdemeanor. There was really nothing against Bulldogs. Rascal was owned by a guy named SP, and Floyd traded one of Rascal's sons for him. A young dog called Rascal Jr. This pup had only one testicle, but SP took him and later sold him. So Floyd got him on a trade of a dog with one neck. It is believed that Rascal won approximately six matches at the weight of 57 pounds. He was considered a game dog, and he was a very rough ear dog. Uh, he sired Tyrans, Tyrans, Peter, or Country Boy, three-time winner. Tyrans, Little Rascal, Tyrans, Marciano, Tall Hands Lou, Tall Hands Boy, a game loser in 2 hours and 30 minutes. Eli's Pistol, Carver Shirley, Bajol's Rascal Jr., Tall Hands Ruby, who produced Cotton's Bullet, we all know this Cotton Bullet, Gajan, a two time winner who lost in 2 hours and 12 minutes to Kamikinsky's Rocky too. And there was, again, many more such dogs. Now remember this, to reinforce the importance of these two dogs in today's history of American Pit Bulls, 
it is very likely that you can trace the pedigree of any pit bull bred in the United States and not find at least one of these two in their pedigree. I believe the only strand of pit bulls that does not trace back to Diabo or Rascal would be the Kobe blood bred dog. But they are being crossed with these strains to produce great dogs as we know of. Jeep, Red Boy, Cross, Red Boy, Jocko Cross, Red Boy, Bolio Cross. See what I'm saying? You know, and we, we speak so highly of, of the of Diabo. That, yeah, we, we could get Jim. You kind of get off the jump, but you go back and start playing with jump. Because jump and these dogs, we can go back to them and we can see there, there's a formula and pattern. There's no way it could have worked, guys, without some type of a network. And as you can see, there was a whole lot of dog passing around. So we know clearly there was a network. And, and, and it's clear that these guys didn't live in the same damn neighborhood. Okay, and it developed into one of the greatest futures of the game. I'm gonna tell you when it peaked. It peaked in the late '80s. It peaked and it ran for the next, to me, ten years at a level that we've seen some of the baddest, greatest. I was around and got a chance to see some of the greatest and baddest dogs of all time. That's how I see. And compared to being in that level, being that I have sat back and I have studied. I've studied when y'all thought I was going to bring Dabo and them in here and, and talk about their pedigrees and what they would breed and produce. No, I'm talking about the people who had them. And what they were thinking and doing and what they had to be able to have at their, at their hands to be able to make this stuff happen. The things that y'all lacking today that y'all trying to work around Complain about, scared to act on. It cannot see in the big picture is clearly that that plateau has not gone up. It has started going down through lack of reference and networking and not enough testing. So I'll say to you today, gentlemen, i say to you today, what are we going to do about it? Do we have any 2022 Diabo dogs? No, there's no way. We have great dogs, but we don't have the dogs of the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. It started diminishing, I would have to say, around, it's the, I think it, it began when the crackdown and the attack on the dog men started around 2002, 2003, when it was really a real uh, attack on dissecting the dog game. New ways of, uh, of locating and finding these dog men because it's going to always be a hard thing for them to do. And it's supposed to be even harder with the things that we have today. There's too many eye seers that want to be eye seen. And you cannot be having these eye scenes and staying safe. Bottom line. A lot of you guys are out here buying papered up dogs just for the purpose of maybe you want to sell dogs. And you come on these podcasts to learn about dogs so you can talk about dogs, but really have no intentions on doing them. Which I don't knock none of you because I don't condone dog fighting. But I am a historian. I'm a historian. I never came on this podcast and never told y'all that I didn't do it. We're talking about something I done over 20 something years ago. And if I did it, it's still where's the proof? So I'm gonna keep it in a fictional form. I'm lying here giving you a fictional things out of my head to prove to you guys that at one time in my fictional world I experienced some of the greatest things that you ever want to see in this game and I know how it got to that point when I realized 
It didn't start with what I was looking at, guys. I went on a journey. Like you guys see, you know, you got some of you guys are religious guys. You all know when y'all when y'all see what makes you pick up the Bible. What makes you go and go read way back there in, in in the beginning when Genesis, when God first created the world, for some odd reason. Why would you want to go way back there anyway? Because you want to know why it is what it is now. At some point, curiosity comes to that even at the door. Because who picks up a pedigree and don't want to go search the back? Me? I stopped looking at the dogs when I realized that it wasn't more of the dogs than it was the breeders because we don't know what they're telling us is the truth. And it's the truth that you try to get down to. Now, how was they able to make these kind of breedings? You heard the names? These dogs, is, is, they all over the place. Chicago, New York, England, Ohio. We know they made a lot of them shit made it down to the south. Lloyd Boudreaux, Texas. Got, we, have, we can start hollering Pat Patrick. We, we have been through the Kobe's, the Lonzo's, the Marlowe's. Remember, through all this, this stuff, these are active. We're not talking about guys who's paper breeding out here. We're not even talking about guys who's running around here with, with self-proclaimed champions. They weren't self-proclaimed. They were just three-time winners and four-time winners. That's all we can call them. Y'all can't even do that. Y'all want to go out to an old sanctioned rule that doesn't even exist without the damn organization that sanctions it, so it doesn't really mean shit when you call yourself a champion. It really don't. And y'all getting used to that. Guys are starting to accept that. And if the old school couldn't do it, and they did it in a lot bigger number in a lot better way and getting a lot better dogs because we wouldn't have the dogs that went for them doing it the way they did it. So why should we start changing things now accepting these non-sanctioned champion dog when it should just be three-time winners? Four-time winners. There's nothing out here sanctioning you to proclaim yourself a champion. You might fall under the guidelines of a sanctioned champion if there was a sanctioned body, but there is one. There is none. So to call yourself the champion is not really a champion sanctioned by what? By a, 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 a something that was put out there that does no longer exist? No, you go back to doing it the way it should be done. You're a three-time winner. Period. They can do what you guys can do. Because it's necessary until you get a sanctioned body. And for you guys to start sitting back, accepting it to be anything other than that is why you guys are falling off. And no, you don't have the dogs of the, the, the 80s. No, you don't have the dogs of the 90s. And no, you don't have the dogs of the early 2000s. You don't. Because it all became a marketable piece of shit after that. Because so many of the bigger kennels were getting knocked off or being forced to retire. Whole bloodlines being wiped out. Whole programs being put on hold. Journals, all, all, all kind of material related to anything. Anything scared everybody into a basement. And, and, and the basement y'all ran to, damn it, that's an empty corner like a car. This is sure as shit. Thank God for the damn real dog man is keeping it alive. But in that process, we got these that, like damn like zombies. There's more, more zombies getting through the gate. Destroying what's already fragile. They just coming in tearing up shit. And with them, they're bringing in intruders that don't have no business there. They're bringing in scammers that don't have no business there. I give Maurice Carver credit because he sure gave me a good-ass answer of why he swapped papers. 
and why he didn't care what papers he gave and why a lot of these other kennels to this very day do it to sell puppies and ain't doing nothing without a sanctioning body they can call anything they want on their yard a champion and you'll go for it they can come up with any lame ass story and, and just print it out there and now y'all chasing it and it's the truth True. If y'all want to be a crusader, but I'm a crusader. I'm going to tell you like it is. Keep it real with you. My question is do you guys have an answer? I got an answer, but you guys ain't working enough to support it enough to put it out there fast enough for me to understand why not. Because I'm starting to realize what most of you guys is in the back room is telling me twins you need they ain't gonna be you ain't gonna find them here if these dog men the thousand people out there the two thousand all the people that go back to these videos and see me i am so real about this thing and i'm so passionate and you guys have seen it and you've been in this thing you see it and you feel it coming from me i can't understand what is wrong with y'all i can't My old doggers, I'm, you know who you are. Some of you still out here running around on podcasts talking about people. Stop talking about them and save the game with me. You got to say, they need some type of network. If they can get on here and trust us and listen to us, then we should be the ones to help fix the network. We can't do it on no damn internet. It's not meant for the internet. Am I wrong for coming out loud and saying it? What other way am I going to tell y'all? What other way am I going to get it across to all you listeners? You're coming on these podcasts, and y'all know I'm, I'm a, a retired dog fighter. It was, it's no secret. I'm telling you this because it's over. Okay? The judge called me a dog fighter when he sentenced me. Never been found guilty of dog fighting. But I had a judge call me a dog fighter. I have a psychiatrist tell me I have PTSD because I believe my dogs are just as important as me being a Marine fighting for my country. And my dog should deserve the same right that I'm, I'm supposed to deserve as a serviceman. In other words, you're never going to get me to understand that what I was did was wrong. Because it was if slavery was wrong, and y'all had at one time, it was right. So I, I don't get it. So I'm too old to try to be broke. It's a passion. And you see it in every one of these stories that we talk about. We're not talking about trash-ass dogs. We're talking about dogs that have names. Who had owners. And without them owners, the people who did it right, even if they did it fucked up. They carried a legacy for you guys to feed off of. And to grow on. A lot of this shit is gone. It's been destroyed. It's been hit with a nuke. Now we got zombies running around claiming to be dog men. We got informants around. With a goddamn FBI or SBA card in their pocket in case they gotta use the number. Got guys out here that just want to buy dogs that have a bunch of dogs and, and with papers and breed. I got a dog over Tom Gardner's yard. Gives a fuck. You ain't doing nothing, Winnie. That's the real world. The shit that mean to me, a real man about the shit. How many of y'all really saying that? I got a whole yard of that, that garden and shit. What you doing with it? I'm out here. I ain't bumped in none of your shit yet. Does that mean I condone dog fighting? Hell no, it doesn't mean condone. I just say I ain't bumped into your ass. That's all I'm just saying, guys. I'm not bumping into none of you guys. And I'm not talking on no internet. 
I ain't trying to bump into you on no internet. This game has always been an underground job. And it's always been able to do it through all extremes. You have to understand this game didn't get diminished because guys was getting rated for dog fighting. It was getting rated for dog fighting because their asses was getting too damn careless. They start losing the respect of the dogs and the money became more important than the dog. Making money at the door. Don't care how they get there. When it's not everybody keeping phone and all that outside, like keeping it in a goddamn car gonna keep the thing from pinging at a tower or something. How about putting them all off in a box? Cutting them off. Pulling the damn SIM cards out of them. Or how about this don't none of y'all show up? Whatever it is. You, what, we supposed to keep this from the police like they don't know? Y'all don't know? You better act like they know because they do. Been known for years how this thing go. Y'all just started to make it easy. Because y'all so stuck on the money and not the door. Everybody think they got they smart. Everybody think they got it all. Everybody got this plan. It ain't a damn network to work from. And it sure ain't no reference to deal with. And I'm speaking out to, I'm talking about my, my, my old friends. My new friends. These podcast dog men out here. Want to use your name to bring all this traffic to you? To do, you know, it, it works for you. Your stories are good. But what happened to the dog man that I knew? When it wasn't about y'all sitting back and got the name, now y'all just in it for the money. For the recognition. For what? I'm here doing the same shit and I ain't getting nothing. I'm, I don't see no fun in this. I see educational purposes in, in historical friction um, um, stories. Fictional stories. There's no fun in this if nobody's playing with you. There's no fun in this when all you can do is, 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 is just all you can do is come in here and listen and, 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 and they don't have a bunch of stories to tell yourself. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to mold dog man of 2022. I'm trying to make you old dog, dog man because change, times has changed. But don't think I'm some dumbass that don't know that. I'm going to tell you one damn thing. I'm smart enough to be able to save y'all asses if you're listening. Because what y'all trying to grow up in y'all yard ain't shit. And for a person to say that, y'all get mad at me, come at me then. I mean, really. I'm an old school dude, but I still got old school ways. And I'm telling you, I don't mind stepping out anytime. And let me pick who I use. And I'll tell you, I'll smash any one of y'all who think you want to do something. I didn't say no old school dudes. I'll check your hand too. You can always come back in like Brady. Because that's how passionate I am about what I say and do. I ain't scared of shit out there when it comes to it. I ain't got no, I'm not the one doing nothing. What's up here that I got to do out there is what you're going to do. You got to worry about. You can think less than me. You don't even think of it. You can try me too. I ain't going to never shut down. I'll sit down, but I won't shut down. So if I got to make a point to you and some of you old cats, you forgot how it used to be because you got comfortable out here. Is it about the dogs or the money? Are y'all really keeping them out because y'all want to hold on to the recipe just to beat up on them because they don't know no better? And what better time to do it now when it's really in such a dis disarray? The quality of this shit is garbage. You got good ones out here that you ain't making it hard enough for the good ones to see how good they really are. Remember what I said. Respect anybody that's willing to stand there in them corners. That I will never take away. But there's more than that to that. So stand in that corner. Stand there as a real dog man. 
I don't need no money dog man. I need a dog man who means the dogs mean more than you than that damn dollar bill that you're trying to pick up. Regardless of how you get it. This is the only way you're gonna change the demise that we're headed. Or where we're headed. You got guys making more money off of bullies and French poodle French Frenchies than y'all. Yet the greater dogs that has made the dogs what they was all these years. All these years, and we still using old names. And these new names y'all using, I'm going to be honest with you, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. Without any sanction shit going on, without any proper checking the shit the way it's supposed to be checked, I don't believe too much of nothing. Because without a network, the, the greats will never see each other. Without a network, the bold ones, the real ones, would never reach out and, and really feed their hunger of competitor, competitiveness. See, I had to feed mine, so I didn't, my name didn't matter no more. Just the way. That's all I want. You'll never know. Be surprised one day. For some frictional reason, you might see me standing there. Because I, I feed off of competitiveness. I like to, to be competitive. Because the better our shit is, the better chance our shit will be able to get out there and move forward in the future. You know, I'm not Floyd Boudreaux by no means. But I am definitely one of those people that can sit there and say, I had, a, I had my line. And I had a winning line. Now, I didn't have a good bread line. Before I had a good bread line, I had a winning line. Growing hard dogs were winning dogs. Regardless of what's in their pedigree, they became my shit once I started doing what their background did. And I continued the formula. And those after me continued the formula. But this formula did not work without them being the true dog man that it takes to move a line of dogs through history. And there ain't enough of you guys out here, a lot of you out here with them, but there ain't enough of y'all out here to prove the point. It's not enough. And the way I see y'all bouncing in these rooms, I'm not talking about the, the, the watchers now. I'm talking about the old school dog man who who actually know. You know why are y'all on this shit? I mean, really, why do y'all do it? Does it you know do do you we do we bring all the wrong people when we open it up and, and and talk about something that was passionate to us? Is it not passionate enough to you that you can sit there and, and really not walk over a line? A line that you, that really made you a legend, and you can just stay away and just live off you being a legend, and, and and suck in all that shit to just get people to sit there and look at you, and you ain't really saying shit to them. It's benefiting or not to me. I mean, it's all a learning process, but I ain't seen none of y'all walk the gray line like twins. And I ain't knocking none of them. I'm just saying, what's wrong with y'all? Is it y'all two don't know the law? I can say whatever the hell I want to say. We, we do it all the time. We can sit there and call a kennel's trash dogs and, 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 and look how he's talking about this dog. I see on all that shit out there. But you can't come out here and, and try to actually say the most important part of the game. And it's not the dogs. It's the people with them. We need real ones. We, we, we need competitive dog men that are guys out here who want to find the truth. That's the most important thing about raising a pit bull. The most important thing about being a dog owner, period, especially when it comes down to a line that a dog that are diminishing in such a way. 
I would told you in my very first video about chain space and the value and all that. But the most important thing I told you about the whole thing is you got to be true to yourself. You got to be able to look out there and see for yourself and not be trying to put it in your head and fix the story in your mind that you can go out here and spin around everybody else. But knowing when you walk away from all those people, can you really stand there on your line and look at every single dog and say that dog belongs? Because if your dog ain't worth talking about, your dog ain't shit. And I say that not being mean to you guys. I'm only talking about the fact that there's not a great dog out here that we pull up them pedigrees, see them champions and grand champions. And we talk about their past. We talk about their breedings. We talk about their puppies. There's no way in the world you're going to tell me, regardless of whether that dog is bad or good, if he was not the dog with a bunch of accolades and all whims and dogs with one of him, we wouldn't be talking about it. But we ain't talking about your dog because your dog ain't shit yet. Just, 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 just being honest. Be honest to yourself. Until your dog either produce some winners, until your dog starts doing some winning, this no dog is not worth talking about. Stop throwing your goddamn pedigrees up there if your dog ain't doing shit. That's what's wrong with y'all now. Being real. It, it, that's what the pedigree said. You, we started with Dalbo and worked our way back. We didn't work our way up. We went right to the back and went to why Dalbo and, and Rascal. Just simple thing. And we wasn't even talking about the dogs, really. We were talking about the dog men. The dog passed through many hands. We know the dog man wasn't playing with them damn dogs. That's for damn sure. All them champions and grand champions and, and five time winners and six time winners. You just, 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 we don't hear none of this shit over here. And don't say, ah, oh, because it's the internet. Don't we hear that shit. And just as soon as you got on it, you got everybody congratulating them, motherfucker. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Just keep it real with you guys. I want to spark up Talk Shit Tuesday. And I want to come at you guys using two good dogs, man, that I believe that meant a lot to the game. And then the people involved, Ed Crenshaw. Look, at we talking about Ed Crenshaw way back then. That's how old we is. This is a lesson. Remember, when you come to my show, don't look for some raha, me trying to sell you some shit to use or this or that or not like that. Guys, I'm getting down to the bone of the most important thing, the only thing that keeps me going in here. And then the passion of just having a fucking pit bull. It was a life that I lived with them and the people. You know, it, it, it's something when I hear somebody tell, say that, you know, friend, they just don't call you a legend because, you know, it's a name. They call you a legend because you deserve to be called that as such. And I'm going to tell you, when they say that to me, man, now, I understood clearly when McNasty and, and the Abrahams, you know, even just in them, they say when you, when you are around somebody that's legendary in your own eyes, and you carry the dream that you see in them dogs, in your dog, when they become legends to you, you become a legend yourself. Because you'll mock your way of getting where you want to be when you want to be in their position. And all I ever wanted to do is be in their position. I didn't have to lie. I didn't have to cheat. I didn't have to do none of that shit. All I had to do was follow the people that I admired the most. They were legends to me before they was ever legends. Yes. You got legends sitting right there on podcast right now. You can just sit back and just live off the name of being a legend. You know, they tell y'all a little bit, but most of the time they sitting there looking at y'all while y'all looking at them, clocking them dollars. You got down there, all them damn people following in. That's as much as what you do. Man, get your hands dirty, man, while you're on here. I need y'all to start joining me and getting dirty. You don't see no motherfuckers coming in here snatching me about this chair. The fuck, let's go, y'all. What the hell y'all doing? 
Have some of y'all followers over here. Y'all want to see the game get spiked up a little bit. That's all I'm saying. World need to be moved around here because the network is definitely gone. We're not doing nothing like they did, and they didn't have none of this shit that we had. And they were able to maneuver, network, show, prove, and produce. The only way we got where we are today. And all we seeing is the great going this way. And we ain't got none of that old great chick going back up the hill. We ain't find a dog out there that's produced like Mad A Jeep and none of them dogs in a long damn time. And, and, and for again, for you untitled champions that ain't got nothing sanctioned under you, stop doing it because, you know, again, you're only bringing scrutiny to yourself. Because it's getting down to the point where everything's got to be private anyway. Why? Because y'all ain't figured that out either. Y'all didn't lost control of that like you lost control of the network. You lost control of the proving. You know, you ain't got we don't have none of that under control. We ain't got no network, no competitiveness, and show ain't got the reference to even start. To even begin a network. It's a staggering, huh, too much bullshit. You know, some of you would rather take your papers and sit there and look at them all day. Or, 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 or keep continuing to shoot emails, you know, showing you how your shit is bred. Well, you know, it's all good, and I, I, I don't knock none of them because y'all have some great ones. But what I keep reverting y'all back to and keep on sending your asses right back over here, GHK Reloaded. If we give a damn less about them things if they ain't putting it down. Now, we ain't got but so much time. Don't send them, send me a pedigree of a four-year-old dog that ain't done shit. And think, grit bread, but what has he done? A dog that's got black from the third pedigree up, yeah, you can look at the fourth and see that there was a purpose that they was doing it, but somewhere in there, in that third to the first, you know, all the activity stopped. Based on how they bred it, it's just proved the point that the people from the third to the first weren't doing shit. And we don't talk about y'all because you'll never do anything. And if you don't, even if you are you going to produce something, you didn't do nothing with what you had, so what are we supposed to do with the shit that you're trying to sell us? Are you wanting to do your job? No, I don't see where you're going to get any kind of money out of that breeding because you're not going to draw too many attention to anybody wanting to knock on your door, wanting to buy some shit. It ain't done nothing. You know? This, you know, today was one of them days I figured I'd come out and be a dog man today. I'm, I'm tired of walking that, that, that line of, you know, being Mr. Nice Guy because, you know, I'm looking at this shit and it's like, you know, I'm coming on here and I want to know where some real dog man is. Shit, I, I said I'm getting tired of sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Why am I still sitting here? Why I ain't out here enjoying it out here with the very same people that I come on my show every Tuesday and Friday? Why I ain't came and seen none of y'all? I ain't got to go live. I just want to see. I mean, we got that many people in here? What you think I'm going to look at? I mean, do we got anybody in here that we're coming to see? I know I got a lot, thousand some people to sit out here and watch our shows every, every show. And they always get up to two or three thousand. I know y'all are watching these things. Hey, y'all got my phone number. Invite me. I'm telling you, I'm ready to come. I'm willing to sit down there and tell you the whole story outside of the internet. You guys act like y'all don't want to support that? Y'all want to see me sit here and tell you to come out there the way y'all is and tell you the real deal? Why I ain't got to sit on the goddamn camera? Send me some damn money to get about this channel. Let me come tell y'all some shit. Play with you too. But I ain't gonna do nothing on this. I need real doggers to stand up and start supporting this, man. I'm tired of seeing all these these, these self-proclaimed champions. Give them something to 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 
to stand behind what they're doing. They're already taking the damn chance that we can't give them what they need to make it real. Yeah, I ain't seen a grand champion going to a grand champion yet. You know why? Not down in these days because there's no such thing. There ain't no sanctioned body sanctioning no grand champions to be called a grand champion. He's a five-time winner going to a five-time winner. P. As a fictional note. Period. Because if we don't have a standing champion, a grand champion, or a registered mayor, governing body who can certify and sanction these type of things that we need for our history. Because without it, we have no reference. We have no network, and we sure don't have true competitive champions and grand champions and registered mayor to even be recognized to carry on to the future. Because we ain't putting enough tests in the claim these some of these so-called great ones some of these so-called great ones ain't been put out there to, to face the competitiveness of a network that is right now doesn't exist so you have nothing to work on to prove your point so it don't mean shit to me and it shouldn't mean nothing to you guys is what i'm pointing out there's a flaws here and this is bad that i can't get you guys to see that what you want out of me, I can't give you here. Yeah, all you guys want to twin this, twin this. I, I love you guys. I love you guys. But guys, I'm real as fuck. So I'm going to act as real as I can be, man, because I can't come to you guys fake as fuck, man. I'm just trying to tell y'all. Y'all want to support a real dog, man? Then I understand why y'all ain't doing that. What are y'all coming to this show for? Y'all real dog and y'all real, real dog men. Then why am I still sitting in my hand and not coming out here talking to you guys? Why wouldn't you want to support that? Knowing what I'm fighting for. Why well, I got to sit in here and do that? When I should be out there visiting you guys. You're supposed to be supporting this, knowing that's what I'm doing. I'm not here to open up a classroom and continue giving you the classes and can't come out there and see what the fuck my damn students are doing because y'all won't support it. It's y'all toy, not mine. I'm telling you what we need. And we can't do it here. Y'all support me? They act like it. I am the, probably the only one that's willing to stand up and say, I don't need no raffle. I don't need to give away shit. I don't need your money to do nothing but come out here and show y'all the way to do this. And it's going the only way I can do that because I sure as hell can't do it on here. But doing it on here, I might as well just tell the fucking world. And y'all know that. So support me if you believe in it. Support me if you're real with it. And believe me, it's so diminished, it's so bad, that I'm not looking for a mob of shit to jump off here. Because it ain't really going down like that out here. We got a lot of y'all out here running around in these chat rooms making a lot of these, these YouTubers, you know, a pretty good living just sitting up there listening to them and they bullshit. But you watching, you looking at a real motherfucker right here to just can, be glad to get up out this damn chair. I don't need y'all to come up in here and sit and listen to me and then go back home and pick up your paper and start reading the shit again. I, fuck, I ain't never been on that. And I ain't never tried to tell y'all to do that. This is really for some dog men over here. I ain't got nothing out here to sell y'all with no kind of legacy or nothing. I ain't tried to sell you shit yet. Nothing. Not a collar. Not a pencil. Not even a break of stick. Nothing. 
I need real dog men to support this. I need real dog men to wake up and, and know that I, I know what I'm talking about. I just said enough and ready to do it. But why am I doing all this? If all I'm really going to get out of you guys is a bunch of thumbs and likes and, and where's the support? Why can't I come and see y'all? I'm out here bouncing around. I'm going to be out here bouncing around. Because I told you, the basement is where it's at, and I cannot, this is not the basement. The only way I can get around and see the people that I want to see and the things I need to do has got to be somewhere that can't be here. And I can understand why I can't get enough of you guys to understand that to get me out there to do that and bring it to you. I can bring it to you. I can bring it all together. But if I ain't got y'all support, I'm not going to get nowhere. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, we can definitely put some of these recipes y'all got to the test. But that's what y'all here for. But that's the only reason I'm here playing. You don't hear me ever talking too much about growing hard. You don't. And if I'm talking about, I'm talking about what I did. I am growing hard. You know what I mean? And if y'all got the passion that you see in me, then y'all must be lacking in what it really feel like to see what it felt like for me. I am nowhere close to none of these great guys, but one damn thing for sure. I had a chance to drink out of the same fucking cup of day did. I can say I produced my own champion. I can say I win brand my own champion. I can say I produced a line that could produce winners and champions. All based on my mentors, not no one or some old backyard guy that y'all know that you know been around for years and told you all these great things. No, I played with the real shit. My mentors were the real shit. Never knew about nobody outside of that that wasn't real that I wanted to talk to any fucking way. Be honest with you. There's a lot of dog men to step up on this damn camera and tell you the same thing. Boy, you ain't been around with nothing but the grams. I'm one of the greatest ones. Everybody know. Why do everybody know? I'm too busy out there trying to be great like them and doing what they do. I don't see none of y'all doing this shit. I ain't seen a none of y'all knock down on my door like I knocked down on theirs. I can y'all be around something great and not take advantage of it. I sure as hell did. They wasn't sitting behind no damn chair looking into a TV screen telling me this shit. I had a chance to interact and sit and be around these people, man. And this is when it was at its best. There's no way in the world. No way in the world don't tell me it's like that now, and it's not. It's not, fellas. I'm around here in the back streets, and I'm telling you, ain't a lot of back there. You got more, more failure going on back there because nobody's ever really coming through. It's getting so bad out here, you can't trust Jimmy from Jam, and Jimmy Jam used to be together. You know? So what we got to do? We got to change the way this shit's done. Y'all don't hear that? I go for all my podcast writers. Seven, eight. Pelican. G. Red Boy Rasco. A lot of y'all. J. May. Come on. Fat Bill, legend in his own right. He could be the, he, he, to me. He should be the front runner. You, you, you got all that over there, and, and you sure as hell deserve it. But you ain't gonna do nothing with it. Can you send some of that shit over here so I can get some shit popping, so I can help you out? Because evidently you ain't trying to play the real game either. And I ain't saying that you ain't because you still, you know, I ain't understand. I'm in the basement. 
And I'm sorry. You keep it real too. If I'm in the basement and I ain't bumping in the yard, I mean you ain't doing shit either. And if you want to do something, then we'll bump each other in the basement. And until that becomes a factor or a fact, it's gonna continue being a fictional conversation. But in the meanwhile, that's all this is all about, gentlemen. And this is how y'all are supposed to ride it and play with it and enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Talk shit Tuesday. Was it really about Dabo? Was it really about Rascal? Or was it about the fact that the dog man that bought those dogs here in the, the network? And getting those dogs bred the way they got them bred to down to the matches in the winter. Down to being able to still sell these dogs and get rid of these dogs and then like these dogs and the testing of these dogs. Uh, okay. and, and then switching up papers and all for a good reason and understanding. Hey, when you start talking, trying to make a dog man piece of shit because you changed out the papers. Well, back then, I can see why. Because there's a definite logical, I don't want everybody to have my rest. I ain't telling them I don't want them to come by my dog. I just said, I don't want them to have my recipe. They were still doing dogs. And they were still doing dogs. And that's like I said. That's why you take that shit and go to house bread and let that be your accolade that you created and start your whole line from right there down the far end. Because it might not be right. So you go be anything to defend when they say, well, they say Angus is Grand Champion Ace's daddy. Well, guess what? Grand Champion Ace fought just like Angus, but you know what? I'm going to go on the fact that Red Ace was off of Grand Champion Ace, and that's a fact I know. So I'm going to ride on that right there. I can tell you Ace was a killer. Red Ace was a killer. Mama the Brat was a killer. So regardless of what Angus was, I can tell you about Grand Champion Ace and what he produced to created the shit that made the going hard dogs what they are. That's as far as I can go. I cannot go no further than that. So if Ace was off of Angus, so be it. But right now, he's off of Champion Charlie on my paper. But what my suspicion, they all look like Grand Champion motherfucking Angus to me. And if it don't be it for goddamn super not saying it to me and bringing that question up to me and, and being in such a smash manner the way he made the comment and then knowing that it was true that Angus was on his yard, why would you tell somebody really you really didn't know anyway unless you was trying to tell me something? Because what you told me is sure what I got in results as far as that back end clearance. So when I look at it, so when I look at these things and I look at these stories and I look at the Abrahams and I look at Nasty and then I look at Stone City and how their relationship with evolution through all these years and not really putting their thumb on that dude. Why y'all putting that thumb on that dude and knowing that dude is on some shit? You know, well, because there was a little motherfucking backdoor working that's going on there. But did it change the fact of the dogs that they were producing? No. Always showed that the deterioration of the dogs was definitely going to go down the drain when it started becoming more of selling puppies, selling dogs, than it was to proving that these dogs were legit to carry a legacy, a line of dogs. And they weren't. A lot of these dogs is papered up champions and paper picked up shit. You know, and they based up on the line and the way they bred anything even bred like that. They ain't proving what y'all expecting them to prove. They're not. I got a question. Emmy James, 2022, the environment and the climate has changed. R-I-P-R-O-M, P-O-R, C-H-A, and G-R-10. And, and guess what? I'm saluting you because you are 100% positive, bro. I am with you. Yes, that is very true statement. Yes, you are right, Mr. James. It is R-I-P. They have no right even using them titles, do they? They don't. How you using something that's dead? I mean, I see somebody heard me. Somebody heard me. Thank you, Mr. James, because that's the point I'm trying to make, bro. They ain't got no business using something that's dead. 
Look at that chat, y'all. Pay attention to what he said. That's, that's what it is in a nutshell. You have no right to be calling your dogs them names if that's not what they are, because they're not. Those titles are gone. There's no sanction and bodies to give those titles. So that shit is done. Stop acting like it's still existing and don't. Y'all don't like what I'm saying? Let's do something about it. Support the movement. Don't come and just sit there and watch me. Come get me out of this chair and let me come see you and tell you some more shit that you can be out here doing. To make a difference. Not meant for everybody. And everybody can't be a part of something that's not there for you to be a part of. It's the ones that got the passion and the love that's going to get me out of this chair. And I don't say enough of y'all because I'm still sitting in this chair talking about it. I give love to everybody that has. And they still do. Because that's what keeps this thing going. I'm sick. The fuck I got to do? I can barely work. What am I going to do? Run, run, run around the rest of my time really giving all my passion to this screen here? And that's not what I really want to do. What I really want to do is pull up my sleeve and show you young boys how to do it. And dare one of you motherfuckers to act like you think I ain't play I'm playing. I'm still a deadly ass person because the dog might not be here, but what's up in here ain't gonna never go away. And you put the right thing on my hand, you're not gonna whoop me. I don't give a fuck what you got. Am I breaking the law by saying that? I don't think so. That's what you call a competent dog man. It's only speaking in the terms of fictional, educational, Enjoyment. It's called entertainment. It's how you take it. You know, fuck how they take it. It's how you take it. It's all matter to me. Because you really want to deal with it like this, guys. We can do this and talk this kind of shit all day long and then nothing. But what good is it if it ain't going to develop into something that's real and meaningful and historical to carry on something that has been done a long time ago that has literally been destroyed? And it's not all the law's fault. More guys get their dogs taken because of the activity they did outside of the dog. Their dogs only pay for their, their bullshit. It only becomes a problem when you got guys who got a bunch of damn dogs knowing they ain't got no business with all those damn dogs. Because they don't know how to do what real dog men do to shit. So you can't really call him a real dog man if you're going to get so ball down with a bunch of dogs that you can't take care of them that you just stop and just let them just fall to shit because you didn't say fuck it. And then when they finally crash your yard, your yard looks like it's a, a total mess. Then you just hurt every dog man in that area. Every dog man in your area is going to get a bad tag because they're going to take your ass and they're going to plant you all over the TV screens with your raggedy ass yard and your dogs. And they're going to blame everybody in that whole area that's got those dogs to, to beware. But then you got them same guys in that area who really don't care. Until they see his ass all on TV, now they mad at him. So now they got to worry. But you should have been worried about that. If you're smart, you should be making sure, like they said, it, it takes a community takes a community. The dog game is a community. The fraternity is a community. This YouTube shit is a community. If you can't take care of the bad shit in this damn community, like this room is a community of guys that come here all the time. New, old, they, they come back, come back after the show, go on and watch it, wherever it goes, it's still a community. And if y'all cannot put your thumb on some asshole, and y'all better let that asshole just piss over everything in the room to fuck it up, Then that makes everybody to come to the room wondering why this dude's still here and y'all ain't doing nothing about it. Why would they want to come back to this room? Ain't that how it go? It's really bad to me. And it's really sad to me. That I see more wannabe dog men out here trying to do what I do. 
in comparison, in comparison, they are doing what I do here. Here. But in no comparison have they done what I've done. In no comparison have they done what I've done. Now, if you don't understand there's a problem with that, there's a problem with that, then I'm sorry for y'all. I am. I'm really sorry for y'all. Because this, all this is is a pit bull entertainment. And that's as far as y'all want to take it. And I ain't got nothing to do with that. But guys, remember this. I am not here as one of them. Not me. You can definitely find me if you out there. But the guys that I'm talking shit to about right now is the whole system. There's enough people in this system of this shit podcast shit to make a damn difference. And it's a shame that I'm the only one standing here blowing the horn. And if they passion is anything like mine, call me the fool. If you want me to be the fool, then give me the fool. I'll put the fool hat on to get the progress of bumping. And I don't want to just sit in this damn chair and, and, and live off of something that I didn't done. It just don't look right to me because it just don't feel right. Especially if I'm not getting the response back that, hey, y'all ain't me yet. I can tell you about the ones it is. I can tell you about the ones it is. And it's not a lot of them. You got registered guys out here. It's got the ability to, to make these sanctioned events. Well, but we don't know. We don't know what's true or what ain't. We care less. Not our job. Job is to only report history. Period. And tell you when it happened. If it ever happened, I don't care. I don't know. My job is just to only record history. And as long as it's part of record. Titles and sanction under that record will be there. That's all I know. Why it's called the historical book of records. Protected by law. Because there's nothing there to condone dog fighting. Nothing there to promote dog fighting. It's a historical record of some some fictional events. Until proven factual. They're always going to be fictional. We don't know. We can't tell you what happened yesterday if I wasn't there. It's not my job. But we need storytellers. And I want real storytellers. And if you with this, you want to say this, then support this. Because I'm the only one out here speaking this. To support everybody else. If you're not real, then what are you doing supporting everybody else? We you have a chance to support something that's real and be a part of it. Don't get it, fellas. This is Talk Shit Tuesday, and I really had to get this off my chest. And I figured the best way to go about it is to go back to where most people remember. The most influential dogs of, the, uh, of all times right now. It's still Diabo, the Kobe's, and all that other shit that created down from that. They didn't. They weren't just out here doing shit, man. They, they just a proven fact that there was a network going on, and it's definitely through the breedings you see there was definitely a formula, and a fact of that there was active breeders, great men with great dogs, down the dogs. Let's talk about the men, all the lies, and and still doing what they're doing, and still talking about them in 2022, from a person who's claimed to be a legend himself. And I thank them for creating what it was a, a blueprint for me to follow. Because that's exactly what I did. I did what most of the guys that I admired didn't do. 
I was able to go back and pay attention to how it began. And my duty to stand here even today after being retired and coming back and looking into this game and seeing how much it changed. To get back in here, man, and really got some new things for the 2022 that I cannot just sit here and tell you. But until you get me out of here, this is where I'm going to be. And you guys will probably never know. Because if something happens to me, it's going with me. So you better try to get it out of me before I go. Because it is something to change the game. And until I get the support that I need, it's going to stay where it's at. No, I don't do raffles. I don't do none of that shit. I figure if you're a real dog, man, like the guys and the people who has been supporting me seems, seems to be the same people, then I'm down with y'all 100%. I just don't want to share that space with you guys just doing and giving it to these guys, you know, the love that ain't. What about them being crossed into the stream? Yeah, that was in, I mean, that's where he was. Mike wants me to go over this part right here. They are being crossed with these strains. Okay, it says, to reinforce the importance of these two dogs in the days of American pit bull history, it is unlikely that you can trace any pedigree of any pit bull in the United States and not find at least one of these two dogs in their pedigree. It is believed the only strain of pit bulls that does not trace back to Diabo or Rascal, which those pedigrees would be the Kobe dogs, the Kobe bred dogs, but they are also being crossed with these strains and dogs to produce winners, such as Jeep Rare Boy, Rare Boy Jocko, Rare Boy Bolia. I mean, a lot of these guys out here got dogs. They're supposed to have dogs. You're supposed to know how your shit is bred. And a lot of you guys, you know, when I read it the first time, I shouldn't have had to read that part no more. Because even for you green guys, I'm pretty sure you got, this is what y'all live off of. Y'all don't live off of uh, 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 match dogs and winning match dogs and none of that. Y'all don't. So I, I personally didn't even want to read that part again. Because... In 2022, it don't mean shit. Not at all. Because y'all not doing nothing with those lines to, to, to make them what they were back then to carry them any further than where y'all at. Yeah, that's back then. The important thing is many bloodlines. That was way back then when the game was plateauing up the hill. When it peaked up there in the late 90s when it was at its best, when you got all those great dogs. They're all those great dogs. You know, when I sit in here to make my point, I don't make my point as none of these breeding ass people. I'm making my point as a, the, the person that I was in a dog man. The breedings ca I care less about because half the damn shit wasn't real anyway. Just like I said about my own damn yard, and based on what they was doing with their shit, I don't know if this shit's bred like it is. See, on my papers, they had Grand Champion Buckers, something off a of Golden Boy. But in real life, he wasn't. But on my pedigree papers, so how am I supposed to toss this shit? Give a fuck about them damn papers. Really, I don't. And you shouldn't either. I'm sitting there with a pedigree that's sitting there with, with, with that ain't right. It can turn around one day and may have to say the same damn thing about May too. Understanding those who know the situation, but it don't change the fact. Don't mean nothing based on the fact that you start where it begins. Like Maurice Carver said, I just didn't want y'all to have my recipe, but it didn't change the fact that you got didn't get a good dog. Now, you might not be able to take the dog do, and do what I did with him because I won't tell you how he bred, but you can probably take that dog and, and do it just like they did. Bred that shit and still was producing dogs. But he did it so well that he had to tell the truth. He had to come clean. But the point was, they was working dogs anyway. They wouldn't be, why would we be talking about them if they weren't? Yeah. 
We wouldn't be talking about them if they weren't. None of these dogs. So I'm hoping that you know that I shouldn't have to go into that low of a detail to kind of, you know what I'm saying? I know my room ain't that dumb. Y'all ain't that green. You know, Mike's trying to help y'all like y'all is really at the bottom of the shit pole. Me, I'm gonna be your teacher. I ain't going through that. I'm gonna tell him how to do this last time. Y'all supposed to be working dog. And the damn dog on this thing that we talk about is great. There was not a working dog. And I should not have to explain that. There's not a dog that we talk about that wasn't that was this worth the fuck about talking about. Especially ever in this room. Y'all know how I am. You know? I'm not gonna get a no, no lord to no green. I'm just low as I'm gonna go. Any emphasis that I wanna put on anything that I'm telling y'all when it comes to this shit is because I'm only trying to talk to the fucking people that's gonna have working dogs any damn way. Give a fuck about the rest of y'all if y'all just trying to have a bunch of papers and, and it's not gonna matter to y'all any damn way outside the fact that you don't wanna be a part of a controversy of some fake ass papers, which don't really mean shit anyway. You just the fact that you ain't doing shit with those shit. So it become an issue. Because you probably never had no plans on doing shit with your shit anyway. See, them are the people I'm not trying to communicate with, and these are the people I'm not trying to iterate this kind of shit with. I'm trying to iterate it to the people sitting there, you have to be told this. They already have a mind frame of being a working man with a working dog. They could clearly understand this. You know what I'm saying? So this is what needed to be said. Because it ain't enough of it coming in my room that made me feel comfortable about continue doing this shit. Entertainment, yes. But the game we do is entertainment. That's what we do is entertainment. But what kind of entertainment y'all looking for? I, mm -hmm. This is what I'm on today, fellas. This is what I'm on. And if you believe in what I'm saying, if anybody have any comments, I, I'm open. I'm open. I mean, you was holding the chat room, but you know, you, this is the first, this is the second one you've been giving me. Prentice Carr says, I think the game has always been the game. Hanging papers, dog thieves, fake champions, soft opponent pickers, and pick in puppy puppies. Only difference is the internet puts a brighter light on the game. Brennis, I'm gonna tell you like this, my man. You can, you're right up to a certain point. I'm gonna tell you where you're right at. You're right about everything you said. This is the part where you're wrong. The game has not always been the game. See, the, there's been a time where, see, there was so much other real shit going on that there was no factor in the fake. There was no factor in the thieves. You know, we all lost dogs. We had dogs stolen. You know what I mean? We had, but that wasn't, there was a difference being done, and it wasn't because of the internet. Because the, the websites and the internet was going on back then, and, and we was peaking high. The, the, the actually, it was the biggest, biggest promotion that you had so many active kennels out there. The, the, the internet was flush with that shit. Not only just the journal, it got outside the journal. It went everywhere. It went viral. The, the internet didn't add a light to something. The, the internet did not add the light to a light that was already there. Because what hit the internet wasn't the fakes and the thieves. It wasn't the fakes and the thieves. It was the real dog men. The real kennels. The real people that could put their grand champions and champions up there and advertise for stud. See, there's a difference there, Mr. Carby, and I'm part of that. I'm part of that, that statement. So I can tell you, no, was, you was right about everything about that. But that one piece. 
We was more real out there than it is this bullshit that you're living in now. There was a lot more great dogs on the internet. And not a lot of this fake shit. There was a lot of real champions and grand champions you could pick up your journal and see. And if you didn't like him and didn't believe him, and then you take something off your yard and go test him in or shut up. That's how it was back then. Wish you would open your mouth. Trust in me and you better have a dog. Or I'll run your ass across the coast for opening your mouth and not having one. That's how real it was back then. You know, there wasn't no bold talkers back then, bro. That's for damn sure. And for those who played back there, know what I'm saying. It was competition. There wasn't no bunch of uh, uh, mouth runners jumping on the internet talking about somebody and then find out when that door is being knocked on, you ain't got a dog, then the whole damn world gonna know that this shit talker didn't have shit. No, that, that's the entertainment, watching the curves run. Back then, you was a lot more smarter keeping your mouth shut when there was a whole bunch of damn real dog men and they real champions and grand champions all over the damn internet to put your fake ass shit up there and draw the attention of some people you don't want to see knocking on your door, coming to your house like some of the guys that popped up at some of these fake-ass champions' house and couldn't find a goddamn scar on them and then hurry back to the internet to sit there and say the shit and their experience while they breeding their bitches. No, back then, you could not pull that shit. You wouldn't know put your fake-ass champion out there on the internet amongst all these real ones and think you was going to get away with it. No, it didn't work. It'd be a lot of y'all come back up on you. I wouldn't bred to him. I didn't even breed to him because, man, that was the grand champion. I didn't even see a scratch on his nose. I didn't even see a scar on him. Or a champion or a two-timer. I mean, you breeding to him because he bred great, but it looks like he ain't never been touched. Do I need to pick up the phone and start calling people after I'm seeing this shit for myself? No. The fuck I gotta call somebody for it? I can see. Right? So good, 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 good point. But you know, it, the light did not come from the internet. The light shined on greatness. That's the part you didn't point out. You pointed out the negative, but there was a whole lot more positive when we start putting our shit on the internet, bruh. It wasn't all this fake ass shit going on like it is now. You know, there was a difference, and the game did change. The game was not like that. You had all those great dogs out there being advertised. They didn't have no room for no fake-ass people because there were so many great people out there. You look like a damn fool to pop your head out there knowing you didn't have shit. We would attack your ass like you was a damn lame lamb, and we were lions hungry. It just didn't happen. Why you think evolution was in the position that they was in? The only ones that they was tagging was y'all rookies. Only one y'all that was tagging was y'all rookies. You give me one great kennel out there, a legendary kennel. Legendary kennel. Okay, during that time, it was fucking with anything on it. Yeah, we were getting, I got Sir Kel. I got a couple of dogs from Evolution. I did. But I questioned everything they did. And I always wonder why certain kennels gave him a pass. And then y'all got Chico Lopez out of the same school that he came from, from Evolution. And he done the same fucking thing. Used the same playbook, and it worked. To this day, it works. Y'all got this man sitting on a plateau like y'all had Evolution at one time. Am I knocking him? No. I'm just telling y'all like it was. What they gonna get mad at me or what? What they gonna do? Give me a way to try me if you want to. They don't wanna do that. They can't afford to lose to me. They can't afford it. They, they would be stupid to even try. Trust me. And nobody them gonna knock on my door. They don't do those kind of stupid things, y'all. They don't. That's if you knew better why they wouldn't. These are the kind of things that they don't want to see happen. So I don't worry about it. 
I say what I want to say. Anything else? Hey, fellas, y'all like this shit? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. My souls. My souls. <laughs> roses. We need roses. Um, he been reading all the chats all night. So I guess y'all in that pump position. I hope I gave it to you like I wanted to give it to you. I hope I said it in a way that you can understand it. You know how passionate I am about my stuff. Uh, sometimes I get, you know, worked up. You know, I try to get to pipe myself down when I get up out of this chair. You know, my chest is hurting a little bit today. I think I'm putting a little too much heart in this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I be thinking about it like, you know, I be telling my brother all the time, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's not, it's not the fact that I want to become active. It's the fact that there's not no activity for me to play with. You understand what I'm saying? I've been in this game a long damn time, and I know when activity is in a game that I love. And this is some bullshit. I'm sorry. And then I come to these rooms, especially my own room. I go to all these other podcasts. I see these guys. And then I come to my room, and it don't make me feel no fucking better, y'all. I mean, I'm looking at 7-8 with Mr. Garcia, schoolboy. Okay, great guy. Great guy. I mean, he has great goals. But even him wouldn't be no conversation piece if he wasn't who he was. But he wasn't a conversation piece when I go to comparing him to Abrahams and, and Nasty and Fat Bill and... Goddamn, I'm talking about there's so many more. Hardcore. RC, so so boys, Yankee boys, Gator boys. And he wasn't. I'm sorry. But he was a great dude and I love him. But there's no comparison to my favorite and my mentor. Give him all the props in the world and all respect. But even then, you can sit back and, and, and give your opinion. And, and, but you're not, you know, you would think that these guys are the guys that need to be helping me. You would think that they want to, they, they, they know that. Not like they don't. Support this. I ain't trying to make y'all part of that. I ain't trying to knock what y'all doing. But support me so I can help these guys. And y'all support me. But I'm the realest fucking thing on this shit. You think I don't know that? I ain't the dummy here. I know what I'm doing. But y'all panicking? Ain't nobody ran through this show yet. And, and, you, and you had to have my brother get on the screen and say, you know, they arrested my brother last night. Y'all wish they would. For what? I'm trying to show y'all. I ain't scared. I'm scared of what? If you damn Donald Trump can get on the show on, on the, and be the president of the United States and say, fuck Congress, fuck the FBI, fuck the Justice Department, fuck the Constitution. And matter of fact, I want to stay president, goddammit, and try to take over. What the hell are they going to do with me? <laughs> Shit. Come on now. Shit. Come on, fellas. <laughs> Right. The social media is not the 80s. Okay. Now, we know about the GHK dogs up here. Hey, man, what you know about them dogs up there, Kyle? You, you must be one of them that don't get, you know what the GHK, you know about the GHK, you know you ain't got nothing to worry about, do you? You don't give a damn. When you know, because you taking a look at your own shit, you don't need to step outside your yard to see. You need to check, you need to know when you what you're walking off your yard with. If you got a JFK dog and you're able to walk off that yard with that dog, then you is nothing to be playing with. I know what you're saying, Kyle. If you know about the JFK dog, then you know I know what you got. If you can walk off that yard and feel confident, they got their hands full fucking with you. Because there ain't nothing to play with. And neither am I. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, bro. Hey, man, thank y'all for all them guns and roses, man. Thank y'all for all them guns and roses. You know, I, I, it's not every day that I try to walk that line. You know, I make my brothers cringe. I make my wife's cringe. I make my, my brother's wife cringe every time I do this shit. 
And I keep on telling you, y'all better up my, my supporters so I can get the hell up out of here and go visiting. Because the more I sit here, the more I must be walking that damn line because I'm trying to get the real dog man to holler at me, man. You know what's up, Cal? He up there with me, nasty, sitting nasty to talk about. It. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, my dog was, man, that was my big brother, man. That Michigan, all the dog man up in Michigan was my big brother. I'm talking about Noonie, Big Ralph, Big Leonard, Armin, Bam, Sweet, uh, Street Sweeper. Then who was the dude that had Street Sweeper? Remember, he, he was a grand champion. You all know who I'm talking about. Yes. I hope I didn't forget none of y'all. I know I said Joe and Nate. I forgot about my boys that have pepper in them. Yeah, them boys was nasty as hell. Shit, let me see. Frank Bunce. Man, look. I've been around some of the greatest dog men in the world. And I am one of y'all, like one of y'all new guys out here sitting in the room with me. This is how it was for me. Now imagine, guys, me taking a rise such as that. And the only reason them guys had a chance to talk about me and why they talked about me is because I paid attention and I followed the formula. And if you leave a trail in my paper background that became an asset to me, that gave my legendary heroes all the right to say, them twins, them boys is bad. Yeah, them boys, yeah, them boys pay attention. Listen to me. Not too many of them guys can, cannot say that about us. A lot of them guys say a lot about us because they got a lot to say about us because they put a lot in me. I'm probably glad and really happy as hell that I proved them right. That I was able to do what I was able to do and be able to enjoy the time that I spent with the people and then become a success after I come back. You know, remember, I left with, with knowing nothing. But just glad I enjoyed the time that I had and was able to walk away to keep everybody safe. Totally walked away from the game. Keep everybody safe. That's a real fucking dog, man, to me. I patted myself on the back for that shit for many years and didn't feel bad. But to come back and be blessed and to hear them to this day. See me pop back up and see them all coming back. All of them coming back. Because you can't get no really than a going hard twin. And I'm a product of every single one of those guys. I can go from Detroit to Chicago ready to rumble all the way down to motherfucking Canton, Ohio, all the way down to Columbus, all the way over to New York, all the way down to Texas. Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, D.C., Virginia. The realest motherfucking dog man you ever want to meet on this podcast is sitting right here telling y'all that only became real because of the people I ran with. Because you can't be no realer when they all are legends. The bounty hunter. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. That's right. The bounty hunter. Christian. Yep, Christian. Christian, thank you, bro. Thank you, Christian. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. Bounty Hunters, Grand Champions, Peace. A beast. A beast. Two colors. Ram. I didn't see. I, I see. I got the. <coughs> and and go, finish going. Don't forget the Grim Reaper. Wardo. Remember? Come on. There were just so many of them, man. There was so much that I did up in Detroit that you couldn't. And that was, a, that was a network in itself, in a community. It was a community. I mean, in all these plots, man, in the overall fact that it was a network in a community. This is how I was able to go to all them places. My thing is now is I'm back out here running around, ain't got nowhere to go. Nobody to see. I don't want to go see my old friends. I'm going to go see me some new friends because y'all are the future. Like I was the future to those guys. Them guys was proud as hell of me to come up here and say what I'm saying right now. 
They are. They're proud of me. And they laugh at me because this is what they would expect me to do. Me and my twin. That's just the way them crazy dudes is. They, they wild like that. That's why they love it. Not a one of them is going to sit there and tell you they don't. But the results, based on what I was taught, in my eyes, and what I seen through my eyes, through what they put through me, to give me the look that I needed to be success, they were right. And I'm trying to give it to you guys. Music. I'm trying to give it to you guys. I need some more support. I ain't had nobody call and ask me, man, you can come to my yard. I had not one of them. Not a one. To pray it up. Not coming up here with no cameras. I mean, come on. The thing that I have to just have to go around, man, and we got to have this like Johnny Appleseed. And, and, and Johnny Appleseed, when he planted all them apple seeds around to get apple trees, he didn't use the internet because the internet would not spread seeds unless you got some people who's willing to take the seeds and spread them. And it's not going to go past them through an internet. You're going to have to go out there, meet these people, and give them the seeds to plant. So I need to get out here. Now, we have people. Why do y'all, why do y'all people send money? I would think you guys are sending money to support the, the mission, the call. It's like, you know, how do you run a campaign to be a president or a mayor or a county commissioner? If you don't have supporters and donators to stand behind what you believe to help you get there. How can you give me all these hands and fists and thumbs and not support a cause that's going to benefit you? And stand behind and be a part of something that's real important. Not asking you guys to cash a check. I'm asking you guys to support a movement. It's a movement that's going to make us all better and safe. You don't even know what it is because I haven't even told y'all. I'm not going to tell you out here. You have informants that watch this show. You have probably have people that STPA and sit down there and just watch everything that I do on Friday, Tuesdays and Fridays. You can have the same ass people sitting in the room. It could be any one of y'all. And what does it mean? Don't mean shit. They've been doing that for fucking years. How y'all doing? You know what I mean? That's all I can say. Because that's how much it means. What the fuck can you do? If you are sitting up being a cop right now, listening to me telling me, come on guys, just imagine. Now, you can imagine somebody else like a popo listening to this shit. Listen to what I'm saying to him. What would be the purpose if you know you're not going to get nowhere? They've been doing this for years, y'all. This ain't nothing new. They've always been watching. Yes. Why you think they attacked Floyd like they did? Why you think they attacked Pat Patrick like they did? Why you think they went out to Harry Hargrove like they did? Jack Kelly like they did? It wasn't because they was on the internet. It wasn't because there was some, you know, running some podcast where they was blabbing on how great they were. They didn't have half of that shit, and they were still being dull. But did it change anything? No. You know why it didn't change anything? Because they were still good, smart dog men, bottom line. The ones that didn't play it smart, that brought those extra things into the equation that make a difference, are the ones that didn't get away. Me, I'm a Marine. My job as a soldier is never to be captured. And if I be captured, death before dishonor. Bottom line. So if you're going to come and arrest me, you, you, you came and arrest me the way, best way you can come and arrest me. But you're not going to never catch me out of raid. <clears throat> because going into a situation like that was like going into a hostile area. And I always, me and my brother always looked at it like that. And we always made certain things and did certain things to 
to maintain that objective if something was to go wrong that we have a contingency plan to get the fuck up out of here because it's always like that I mean there's a lot of you guys in the, 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 that lives off the street who are part of the streets understand clearly clearly you would love to have a nigga like me running out there around with you, and I'm not using that in a, in, a, in, a, in a racial term. Because off the streets, you know how we roll. That word is not as such an ignorant word when we all come from a block that it's not as bad as y'all try to make it sound. We just have to clean it up when we out here. But to be honest, one of the realest people you ever want to meet is a person who's been tamed and trained by some of the realest people that he ever wanted to meet. Wanted to meet. In all facts and levels of life, guys, if the God was to come in and swoop me up out of here tomorrow, I want y'all to know y'all have made me very happy. Y'all have fulfilled me all the way to the depths of hell or heaven that I would leave here satisfied. Satisfied. Maybe didn't complete my mission, but I definitely left a seed. And if my death was to bring that story back to life, where I became one of them stories that we talk about here, you know, and my push to bring the game back to where it was, in a time that it was at its best when our greatest dogs and our greatest legends who many have started dying off and many of those lines are gone, then y'all want y'all to know this, man, that I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you guys heard. And you got a taste of that. And you got a feel for that. And you can be one of them guys that sit there and say that I, you go on them chats and you'll see my name in this room. Or go on a comment. I got all these subscribers, but guess what? I should have at least a message from every single one of you guys so I can know who you are one day, or you can go back in history. Because these texts will be there as long as YouTube is there, and you can go back in history and pull up some chats and say, I told you, man, I was in there, there's a comment. I wasn't but one comment or one thing, but I'll show you I was in the room with them dudes. Because if I had a chance to do it to prove to y'all the kind of conversation and the time that I spent with all my friends and all those great guys, in my adventures, it would be a definite mark. All I got left is to tell you. And for those who've been around long enough to dare to say, hey, he twin is he right. And those who are still around that haven't died off who know me, but tell you, yeah, that's that's him. Can't help but love me. I am a, I'm a product of every single one of them. I came in with the attitude. And the belief that I was around greatness because of what I saw. And that's all I'm trying to get you guys to see. Support. Support the movement. If we start pressing issues about all these, like you said, the PORs, the all whims, the champions and grand champions, ain't none of that shit sinking by no governing body. So that shit is dead. You know, there's nothing wrong with making your dog a three-time winner. Nothing wrong with making your dog a four-time winner. And nothing wrong with being a five-time, six, seven-time winner. It really don't mean shit in a fictional world, so don't be afraid to put it out there because it don't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit until it becomes a factual fact. And how is it going to become a factual fact if I don't know? I don't know. You know? I don't know. It doesn't mean nothing. It goes no further than that. That's as much as it means. So stop acting scary out here. And, and those who are scary and don't want to do shit and want to live off your papers, that's okay with me. I, I ain't knocking that. If it don't make the game seem like it's so fucked up based on your shit because that's the way you getting over it. Because you really ain't got shit and don't want to prove it either. You just want to live off the money because it seemed like a good investment and a smart move to make, which you're right. But when it comes down to the real game, that shit is not going to last, my friend. You better hope like guys like me don't start sneaking around here hunting for you type of guys because we, we're here to destroy you. 
I'm just keeping it real with you. If you're not real, you're getting the fuck on. You're going to get out of that line because there's going to be guys out here that's going to be hungry. And it's not the fact that we're trying to go after anybody. No, we're going after everybody. Get it? Trust me on that. If you're a real dog or you want to be one, and you want to understand the going hard way how it really is, for real, for real, and you've been watching these shows, I'm getting bored. You know why I'm getting bored? Because there's no activity to pump me up because y'all ain't doing shit. Come on. I'm getting reports. But ain't none of these reports coming from none of y'all, so what the fuck? I sure wouldn't put it out there if it was. But the point is, guess what? I mean, dog, man, we really got my room. And if you, will, if you want one, then make it, make it known. I'll come and see. Let me come see you. Let me see what you're working with. Let me sit down and talk to you guys so you can tell, I can tell you some things that I can't tell you here. That's the point. All right? Fellas, all I'm asking for one more time is y'all, if y'all want to support me, you know how to support it. You go to the cash shop. I wouldn't give a damn if it was a dollar. I got a thousand subscribers. It doesn't matter. A thousand subscribers gave up a dollar. That's a thousand dollars. Now imagine if a thousand subscribers did that once a month. All the subscribers. Just imagine about the ones that got 11, 12, 13,000 followers and still ain't doing shit for the game. Here you got one little guy sitting here, one little guy that's a real dogger and ain't, ain't hiding the fact, ain't scared to talk about this shit. Keeping it real, we'll call whoever the fuck out. You don't like this shit, we can put this shit down. I'll show you the fake shit from the real shit because I don't mind going into anybody. Cut right out of retirement. Who got a problem? Who want to check my motherfucking credentials? Huh? Send in your damn faces. Now, what other podcast will to you that much? Okay? All right? So, if this is what you into, then believe where you ride and support what you ride. This ain't no bus ride free. Not even when it's they're meant for the broken poor. Even they got to come over with bus fare. Okay? So, if you're going to ride on this bus, support it. Support it. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe. If you have any questions, you got my email. If you haven't been through all the other videos to really understand the trail and the path, it's something really enjoyable to go look at. You know, it's really going to be in the bottom line based on a lot of the shit you hear. It's probably going to be something that somebody can really break down and actually write a book about the shit. Because if it doesn't come in time for me to sit down and tell somebody what to write, then this is all y'all gonna have to go by. And I hope there's enough in this thing, man, to really, y'all can put me out there with all the great ones that didn't ever get a chance to do what I done. And those are the ones that I'm speaking of and won't never let nobody forget. And that is my experience with those very great people. You know, very seldom you can hear all the white guys talking about Hines Owen. And every once in a while you hear about the old black guy at the restaurant, and like, you know what I mean? And not being presidential, but this goes for us Latinos too. Family, you know what I mean? We hear about all them great days, but you know what? They very seldomly hear about our networking and our communication and how we're able to bring the Vanna Boys and the Latinos and, and Miss Celine. These are all Latino great kennels. And then you got all these great black criminals, and then you got all these great white criminals, and we was all together in a fraternity. Whether it was bad or good, we still were gentlemen. They were gentlemen because we never let it stop working. And this is what we need to get back to now. Back then, we called them gentlemen. We didn't care what they did outside the boxes. All the only thing matters what went on in the box. And when it really boils down to it, guys, the only thing that matters in that box is the show ain't me and the show ain't you. And the show ain't the fucking money that we tossing around over these lives of these dogs. If the dog don't come first, then there ain't no room for them to be second. And with that note, I'm going to say it like this. Roses! Roses! Damn it! I need roses now! They're speaking in truth! <laughs> Come on, fellas.
brothers. I know this shit is so real. It can't be no realer, man. Y'all need to step up at some point, man. Why would you not want to meet me? Right? I went to many places to meet every damn one of these guys, and I ain't done. There's a couple old ones like I want to go see. Fat Bill, I want to see you. Mr. Garcia, I'm coming to see you. So you back, all you guys is back in my time. The last of the Untouchables, I'm coming to see you. Pelican Bay, I'm coming to see you. Triple J, I'm coming to see you. Thompson Kittles, I'm coming to see you. Because I am the real shit out here. And I'm coming to go find me some more real shit. And I'm coming to kick it with you. And add to my, to my repertoire of greatness. All right? So, stand up and support this shit. Because we don't do cutters and scratches over here, fellas. We don't do cutters and scratches over here. You see how I slide in? You know what I'm saying? We, we, we go over there and we get what's there from the very beginning, that bag. And we don't want a courtesy scratch to go get it. We don't never courtesy scratch to go get it because that's not what it's all about. It's not about that bag. It's about the heart that I'm sending over to go get that bag. Go get that money, boy. Go get, get that, that money, money, boy. Go get that, don't go forget get that, that fellas. Number one rule. Number one rule and always no rule. It's a new rule in 2022. Oh, that's right. Always. What is it? Always. Always. Scratch the win. Y'all know what's up. Y'all know what's up. Deuces. Peace. Look here. Meet you in the parking lot. For those who ain't sticking around for the parking lot, I see you fry. Yes. Boy. See, this is that cool mo shit. You know, you New York boys don't know how to roll with that. That's that cool shit when you be up there dancing that female and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just running a little slow on her ass. Yeah, then you know how they be working that body, you know what I'm saying? I Me, mean, I ain't gonna wiggle too much. I'm too old to wiggle. I just put it out there. I just bop my head back into the screen and shit. You know what I'm saying? Bit. Just have a good day, fellas. Love you, man. Hey, hey. Love Support you, the movement. Get on the bus, man. Get on the bus. Cause we ride.
final numbers for the poll. Zero Hunter, you have a great one. Would you keep your recipe or secret? 66% said yes. 34% said no. Thanks for participating, fellas.
Thank you guys. This is a Tuesday night. Parking lot will be closing. I really appreciate everybody who came out tonight. And to all the viewers who see it beyond and beyond. Don't forget to hit those subscribe button and like buttons. Hope you enjoyed the show. Look back to see you Friday. Hit down on that fire. I'm on that grape eight, baby. I'm on that grape eight. You know, this is a weekday here, man. I had, to, I had to ease up on the bottle, bro. Got to wake up in the morning, got things to do. I'm going to just take it easy on that great bait. I don't know. I ain't heard that great, great lemonade, though. That, that sound like a mellow, smooth. Sit back while your head just feel like it's just peeling off. Are you mixing? Woo! Dog. Heard him. What's up, baby? Yeah, you're going to enjoy it, man. Don't bug you out. You know how twin get when he get in that mode, man. You know, it's always something in every story. I was checking out that poll tonight. I was just wondering, is it possible to keep a secret you got a great one. Maybe you can hide the recipe, but you ain't gonna never be able to hide the dog. That's for damn sure. Preach! I look for I gotta turn it in. Sit back, mellow out, make the best of the day, at least the rest of the evening anyway. But again, thanks for coming out. I hope to see y'all Friday. I'm going to bang this out one more time. Hit y'all with the peace. Yeah. we going to do this till I see you again y'all know what it is let's keep it moving let's keep it moving act like you know scratch the wind baby I'm out peace